More than three million Muslims live in America. And in recent days, we've been hearing about a disturbing rise in hate crimes against them. That's why a new documentary series, The Secret Life of Muslims, caught our attention. The series can be seen online at Vox and the USA Today Network. We asked award-winning filmmaker Joshua Seftel, an occasional contributor to Sunday Morning, to tell us more about it. When I was a skinny 11-year-old living in a small town, kids threw pennies at me because I was Jewish. And I'll never forget how that made me feel. It got me thinking about what it must be like to be Muslim in America right now. So I asked some people of that faith to tell me their stories. Here's one of them. Mark Stroman was in a shooting rampage to kill as many Muslims as possible. As a retaliation of 9-11 terrorist attacks, he killed Wakar Hassan, a man from Pakistan. He shot and killed a man from India, Vasudev Patel. And on September 21st, 2001, he shot me in the face. As a child, my impression about the USA was it's a great country, beautiful country. I remember watching a lot of Western movies for a few dollars more. The good, bad, and the ugly. It was a dream that one day I should visit the wild, wild west and see all those things. After graduating from military school in Bangladesh, I went to Dallas and loved it. Worked pretty hard, and within like a month, I was working as a clerk in a gas station. It gave me an opportunity to get to know the people, to learn the culture. I moved to Dallas May 2001, three months before the 9-11 terrorist attacks. Ten days after 9-11, I was behind the counter. A customer walked in. He was holding a double barrel shotgun, pointing at my face. I said, sir, here is all the money. Please do not shoot me. And then he mumbled a question, where are you from? I was confused, and I said, excuse me? As soon as I said, excuse me, he pulled the trigger. I felt it first like a million bees stinging my face. And then I heard the explosion. Frantically, I placed both palms on my head, thinking I had to keep my brain from spilling out. I felt that my time was up. Images of my, my mother, uh, my father, my siblings, and my fiance uh, appeared one after another one. And I was begging God, do not take me today. Ten days after 9-11, Stroman went on a shooting spree. Mark Stroman, a white supremacist, wanted revenge and shot three clerks who he thought were Muslims. Here in America, everybody was saying, let's get them. Two of his victims died. Stroman was convicted of murder and sentenced to death. They went to Hajj in 2009 with my mother. During the pilgrimage, she was rubbing on my face, she was crying, and uh, I heard my mom telling God that whatever my son wants to do with this life, help him. In my faith, in Islam, it says that saving a life is like saving the entire mankind. Mark Sturman has committed a heinous crime, there's no doubt about that, but all the good things I was taught inspired me, go and do the right thing. Mark Stroman has been in this prison behind me for nearly 10 years. As he sits on death row, an unlikely champion is fighting to save his life. Buyan will be partially blind for the rest of his life because of his injuries. But he wasn't interested in eye for an eye justice. I went to the U.S. Supreme Court asking for clemency for Mark Stroman. Went to the U.S. Federal Court, went to the U.S. State Court of Texas. For this man to forgive me which I've done the unforgivable for him to come forward the way he did. It speaks volume. It speaks volume for the human race. He wrote a long letter to me. He said that my stepfather taught me some lessons that I should have never learned. I have unlearned some of them, and I'm still unlearning some of them. I don't know who your parents were, but it is obvious they are wonderful people to lead you to act this way, to forgive someone who is unforgivable. On the day he was executed, he put my name on a list of people that he would like to talk. As soon as he came on the phone, I said, Mark, you should know that I never hated you. I forgave you. And he said, Reis, I love you, bro. He's the same person. Ten years back, his heart was filled with hate and ignorance. But when he came to know me, 
He saw me as a human being. He was able to tell me that he loved me and he called me brother. Today, I am the founder and president of a nonprofit called World Without Hate, educating people about the transformational power of mercy and forgiveness, based on a hope that we can build a better world, a world without violence, a world without victims, and a world without hate.